I'm heading to Fully Charged Live, San Diego, and I want to be able to appreciate the entire event. Do you ever go to a dealership or a car show and just fall in love with a vehicle and then immediately want a spec sheet to know more so you can really appreciate everything that's good about it or know right away if it's the car for you? Me too. So today, I'm going to get you prepped for Fully Charged Live San Diego. We'll start with a crash course in EV charging. And if you're already an EV charging expert, you can fast forward to here where I'll give you a full breakdown of all the EVs available in the US right now, including range, charging speed, starting price, real cost, which is what you're more likely to pay if you get a more spec trim, whether or not they're gonna be eligible for the US tax credit upcoming in 2023, which type of drivetrains are offered, the best and worst quality of each car in my opinion, and some composite stats like cost per mile of range, cost per kilowatt of charging speed, and a composite travel score, which will help you understand how each electric car is likely to perform on a road trip. And finally, we'll take a quick peek at some upcoming vehicles from definitely going to be produced all the way to fantastical prototypes. My name is Adam. I go by A-304, and this is your 2022 Fully Charged Live San Diego Survival Guide. In the U.S., most of us don't learn a lot about electricity in school. So let's do a crash course on electrical terms right now. Speed is kilowatts. Kilowatts is speed. Maybe you've got one of these. And they use these chargers. But remember the old phones and how they used these? Remember how much slower the charging was? The major takeaway here is the cord can mean a lot. For the Apple users, it's very similar but the difference is visible on the other side of the cord that connects to the brick, which can speed up or slow down your charging depending on which one you have. Finally, we all know that Apple and Android don't play nice with each other when it comes to compatibility. So the most popular charging spot in your house may end up looking something like this. Electric cars are this way too. Tesla is the Apple of electric car charging with its own proprietary plug. Meanwhile, everyone else has the same standardized stuff that they share, but because it's shared, it doesn't always work exactly right from device to device. That said, to understand EV charging, we need to look at two things. First, the brick and the cord. They determine how fast your phone charges, and it also controls how fast your car charges. This is kilowatts. Kilowatts, once again, means speed. Which brings us to the second thing we need to understand, which is the battery. Kilowatt hours is capacity. Capacity is how much or how big. Let's break it down. A kilowatt describes how fast an EV charger, or this, puts electricity into your battery, which holds kilowatt hours, or these. 75 kilowatts times 15 minutes, or one quarter of an hour, is 18.75 kilowatt hours. Kilowatts is speed. Kilowatts come from the cable. Kilowatt hours is capacity, or how much. To test your understanding, if I go to the charger and charge at 50 kilowatts for 30 minutes or one half hour, how many kilowatt hours did I add to my battery? A, 17.5 kilowatt hours, B, 100 kilowatt hours, or C, 25 kilowatt hours. Let me know your answer in the comments. Also remember to be nice. And if that still doesn't make sense, let me know where you got lost. On to the available EVs in the US, if there ever was one. The Chevy Bolt is a bargain basement EV, and it's the charge speed that makes it more of a second car. Let's explain the metrics a little bit with the Bolt as an example, and then we'll get to the rest of the 2022 vehicle lineup. Real cost is the base price offering, the top spec offering, plus any local available iterations I could find, and then I factor in some of the common markups. The tax credit info is right in the middle of the scorecard, followed by the drivetrain options. Then, by my best and worst attributes. I'll highlight those if they're really impressive or total deal breakers. In the Bolt's case, charging speed could be a real deal breaker for someone who wants to road trip this car. Cost per mile of range is the real cost divided by the range, and the Bolt performs extremely well here. Cost per kilowatt of charging speed tells you what each dollar you spend is getting you as far as minutes at the charger. Finally, the composite travel score score is the 300-300 rule. For EVs to be as appealing as gas cars for the mass market, they need to have 300 miles of range and need to be able to charge 
at 300 kilowatts. This can be looked at as a grading scale like in school for road tripping ability, with the Bolt receiving a failing grade. Slow charging equals tough road tripping. I also swore not to be subjective in this breakdown, so of course I asked my wife to give a quick yes or no on the looks of each car, and I'll include her comments at the bottom of your screen. Now that we know the metrics, let's look at some other offerings. The Nissan Leaf is really two cars, because the range on the base trim is so low. The low light here is the old charging plug that renders this car almost impossible to road trip in most areas. The Mini Cooper SE is really a second car with low range and slow charging, but it was a slick little tax haven before it lost its tax credit to the recent Inflation Reduction Act. The Mazda MX-30 is an embarrassment to EVs and was strictly made for compliance. Poor performance across the board. The Hyundai Kona EV lost its tax credit, but that won't stop its owners from raving about the creature comforts like cooled seats, for a very reasonable price. They are a little hard to find in some markets. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 will turn heads faster than it can charge on a road trip, and that's saying something. But don't expect it to precondition the battery for you. If you bought a Model 3, a Kia Niro EV owner will tell you why they made a better choice. It's a great deal, but not a road tripper. The Kia EV6 will make all the Japanese automakers jealous, and maybe even a Tesla owner here and there as well. Road trips are on the menu with a side of comfort and space. The Volkswagen ID4 is the ultimate compromise EV. It's got just enough of everything to handle just about anything. Biggest shortcoming is buggy software, but the first three years of road trip charging are free. If you like what Tesla has to offer, but want to stand out a little more, this is the vehicle for you. With good design and long range, the Ford Mustang Mach-E is the Model Y's best competition, but it won't charge fast over 80%. This Audi is a gem, built on the ID4 platform, but it doesn't offer a lot of personality until you get to the top spec. If you don't want to go for all the bells, don't get the Q4 e-tron. Go for the VW. You'll get more features for less money. Got a 200-mile commute? Got a big budget? Want a tried-and-true million-mile EV? This is the Tesla for you. The Model S was designed and engineered so well, it's only needed one major update in the last 10 plus years. Just give it a good walk around before you take delivery. The Model 3 is the benchmark. It's got the charging network, the app, the cameras, the community, and the ease of use. There are no compromises, except, of course, a little fit and finish. The real cost calculation includes the addition of enhanced autopilot or full self-driving, but a base model will not disappoint. The Tesla Model X is the ultimate family EV. Want seven people at once to experience what it's like to beat a Corvette off the line this weekend? Check. Want your kid to make a red carpet arrival at school on Monday? Check. If you've got the money, it checks the box. The Tesla Model Y is comfort, confidence, and community. This is what you get if you can't decide what to get. It beats almost everything, has almost everything, except cooled seats, and gets better all the time with frequent updates. Walk around it before you take delivery. Oh, and... Superchargers. Built as a sedan on a crossover platform, the Polestar 2 has polarizing curb appeal. Otherwise, it's a strong competitor. Features disappear quickly as you move to lower trims, but this vehicle will do it all. And it's not too secretly a Volvo, which is cool. If you like Volvo, the XC40 recharge won't let you down. Spec-wise, it's pretty middle of the road, but it has Volvo quality, even if it does have EV components shoved where an engine and transmission are supposed to be. This is a shorter version of the XC40. Same rules apply. If you're a BMW person, this is the one you get. You'll stand out and be more comfortable doing it than most of the other cars here. But it is just a 4 Series with EV hardware, so you'll have to hear that from the BMW community. And trust me, they'll be sure to let you know. The Audi e-tron is a road warrior if you've got the Benjamins. Comfort, features, range, it's all competitive. It'll charge deep into the battery at high speed, but it will also dig deep into your pockets with a top spec running near $100,000. This one took the least amount of time for design approval from the wife. The Rivian R1T is fast, long range, more off-road capable than you could ever believe, has great charging, and it's every bit of $100,000 if you want it in the next 12 months. Startups are quirky about certain software and repairs, but it is an electric truck you can buy. This is a Jag. Nice. It's also expensive because... It's a Jag. It charges kind of slow, and it has the same batteries GM and Hyundai had to replace via recall. And they haven't been replaced yet. Buyer beware. 
If you don't like the Model X, get a Rivian R1S. Big room, big range, big charging speed, and, of course, big price tag. And a long wait. If you like it, get in line. You won't be disappointed by anything, including curb appeal, pride in design, and legitimate competition. That's a Lucid Air. This is the car you buy when you have enough money to say, I can't be bothered by charging. If you have a long commute to the city, whichever city that is, this is the one. But make sure you live near a service center, because Lucid is a startup after all. Engineered to be fast and charge fast, the Porsche Taycan lives up to the Porsche name in every way. It's a nightmare to spec out, as all Porsche are with too many options, each costing a little more than the next. But it's competitive with the Model S in every way. Are you an alpha? Are you in a club with hundreds of other alphas and want to prove to them that you're the most alpha? Then there's only one choice. Crab Walk is real, and Watts to Freedom is too. So is the GMC Hummer EV. Remortgage the house, it's go time. When you hear the word Mercedes, do you have an emotional response? If yes, look no further than the Mercedes EQS. Incredible range, great charging, screens everywhere, and a price tag you would expect. When a Model S owner tells you it's nice, you don't have to return the favor if you don't want to. Do you like the Taycan? Fast, great charging, iconic Porsche design, but you like Audi better? Then the e-tron GT is the car for you. If you'd sell your 911 to get an R8, put this on your wish list. The most popular vehicle in the U.S. now comes with a plug a big battery, and it can even power your home. Only downside to the F-150 Lightning is you lose out on the tax credit if you tick too many boxes on the configurator. I'm not going to give you the stats on the Toyota BZ4X and the Subaru Solterra. Instead, I'm going to conjecture that Toyota trolled anyone willing to buy an EV from the company that refuses to make EVs. And I think Toyota's plan is to ride this gas engine thing until the wheels fall off, to include a low-quality dad pun. The first bespoke BMW SUV has a lot to like, including range, charge speed, and lots of carbon fiber. However, it's priced out of the tax credit and has a little room for improvement on the user interface. There will be plenty of prototypes, charging hardware, two and three wheeled vehicles, along with plenty of surprises at Fully Charged Live, but my wish list includes the Canoe, the Fisker Ocean, the Polestar 02, the Chevy Blazer EV, the Honda Prologue, the Buick Electra X, the Cadillac Lyric, the Aptera, the Atlas, the Arkimoto, the Hyundai Ioniq 6, the Kia EV9, the Arrival Bus and Microbus, and the Lightyear Zero. I'll definitely be sharing all the highlights right here on this channel, so make sure you subscribe to check them out. So, were there any surprises? What did you learn, and what were you most excited about to see in the video? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one, and hopefully at Fully Charged Live. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.